A man was seated next to a little girl on an airplane, and he turned to her and said, Do you want to talk? Flights go quicker if you strike up a conversation with your fellow passenger. The little girl, who had just started to read her book, replied to the total stranger, Well, what would you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know, said the man. How about why there is no God, or no heaven, or hell, or no life after death? As he smiled smugly. Okay, said the girl. Uh, those could be interesting topics, but let me ask you a question first. A cow, a horse, and a deer all eat the same stuff, grass. Yet a deer excretes little pellets, while a cow turns out a flat patty, but a horse produces clumps. Why do you suppose that is? The man, visibly startled and surprised by the little girl's intelligence, thinks about it and says, um, well, I have no idea, to which the little girl replies, well, do you really feel qualified to discuss God, heaven, and hell, or life after death, when you don't know doo-doo? <laughs> Sorry. And then she went back to reading her book. Who really knows? Yeah? No one. That's why it's called faith. The Bible verse doesn't say we walk by knowledge because we figured it all out and know all the subtle nuances and have all the answers to the, all the questions. No, it doesn't say that. It says we walk by faith, not by sight. That doesn't mean, however, that I'm brainless and accept all that people tell me. That means that I take little information that's been given to me and I make the best choice. I was reading some comments on an internet forum that were pretty clearly divided between people who believed and people who didn't believe in a God. One commenter vehemently wrote, Point me to one ounce of legitimate proof, and then I will listen to your hogwash. She was looking for proof that God existed. I wanted to write right back exactly the same thing. Not looking for proof for God, but proof against. There just isn't any. That's why it's faith either way. The Bible does say this, though. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. God does and will re reveal himself to you. Going back to the girl in the story at the beginning, I know that there are people who can speak intelligently about why horse, cow, and deer droppings do what they do, but who's really qualified? Who's really qualified to discuss God, heaven, and hell? One man that possibly could says that it's just too big for our human brains to work on. Charles Darwin says, I feel most deeply that the whole subject is too profound for the human intellect. A dog might as well speculate on the mind of Newton. Let each man hope and believe what he can. That's what he said. The good news is that you're not called to prove God exists, but you are called to love him with all you've got.